Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. So here I've got my reverse cycle pump action shotgun, which you may have seen in previous episodes. I've made a couple other videos about this gun, you know, about how I built it and how it works. But today I thought I would make a video about how it doesn't work, or some of the failure modes that can be associated with this rather unique firearm. Now, in the testing that I've done with this gun, I've identified really three primary failure modes. Um, for one thing, I have occasionally had failures to fire due to a light strike on a primer. And that isn't too surprising, because the way the firing mechanism works, you know, I've got the hammer that's cocked by pushing it forward, and then when the trigger's pulled, the hammer comes backwards, hits a transfer bar that pivots around a pin, and then strikes the firing pin and kicks it forward to fire the cartridge. And this system has the potential for more friction than a traditional, you know, hammer and firing pin. Um, so, the fact that I'm getting an occasional light strike is not all that surprising, uh, and could probably be fixed just by adding a stiffer hammer spring. The second and more serious reliability issue is the magazine. I designed this with what you might call a stripper magazine, you know, because it holds the cartridges uh, by the rim, kind of like a stripper clip. Uh, but then I've got a spring-loaded follower to feed the cartridges up into the chamber. Uh, and this simplifies the design mechanically because then the right-hand magazine rail that hooks over the rim of the cartridge just becomes a fixed extractor. However, the system just didn't prove to be very reliable. Uh, in practice, sometimes the cartridges feed into the chamber like they're supposed to, Sometimes they get hung up by the rim in the magazine and they won't feed up at all. Sometimes they feed partway up and then get hung up on the barrel as I'm trying to cycle the action. And sometimes they feed a little too quickly and sort of bounce over the extractor lip uh, and get ejected from the gun prematurely before they ever get into the chamber. Uh, so the magazine just has not proved very reliable in this design. Now the third issue is not so much a question of reliability as a question of safety, uh, and that potentially makes it the most serious of the three. This gun is designed around the concept that because there's really no forward pressure acting on the barrel during firing, it doesn't need a breech locking or closure mechanism. Uh, and in principle, that's true. But in practice, if you're carrying this thing around in the field and you happen to tip it downward, the action will open under the action of gravity and, in this case, eject the round that was in the chamber. But if it opens a little bit and you don't realize it, or if you accidentally open it a little bit when you go to fire it, there's nothing to prevent this from firing with the action partially open. And if that's the case, then you'll potentially get a ruptured case and all kinds of complications that can go with that. Uh, in one case, when I was shooting this gun, I actually 
didn't have the action quite closed. I thought I had it closed, but there was a piece of dirt in there and it was actually, boy, maybe a sixteenth of an inch open. Uh, and yet when I fired, that little bit of a gap was enough to blow the side of the case out. And I got a little bit of powder burn on my hands, nothing serious. But I could see where if the action was open a little further, something like that potentially could be a serious safety concern. So those, I think, are the significant failure modes, the issues that would have to be addressed before something like this could ever go into commercial production. Uh, and with a design that is this new and different, you know, this much of a departure from accepted norms in firearm design, things like that are kind of to be expected. And that's why firearm companies that are dependent on quarterly revenue for their stockholders tend to shy away from doing anything this new and different. Instead, they choose to build one more AR-15 or one more M1911 or some other you know, tried and true design. And that's why it's important for freelance inventors like me and maybe like you to experiment with this kind of stuff because even though this particular design probably will never make it into commercial production, you never know what new and different design out there might revolutionize the firearms industry. Uh, so, anyway, you know, like I said, this gun has some significant failure modes, but it was still a fun project and a good learning experience. Uh, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.